In this video, we do an introduction to one of the core tools in IETF 16949 called Measurement System Analysis, sometimes shortened to MSA. So welcome back, Devon and Dawn. Uh, we're getting technical today. Uh, we're going to introduce the viewers to measurement system analysis. So Devon, what is MSA and how does it compare then to calibration? Yeah, so as you mentioned, measurement system analysis. So it's looking at the entire system and how, how you're measuring it, right? Whereas calibration is the tools, you, you want to make sure the tools you use to measure are calibrated to what's required by your customer specifics, whether what, right. whatever standards required. So before you can take measurements, you obviously have to make sure that the tools you're going to use to take those measurements are calibrated. Right. Okay. So a forerunner almost, a measurement system analysis, a prerequisite is that the equipment is calibrated either internally or externally traceable back to a national or an international standard. Whereas measurement system analysis is looking at that complete measurement process. Okay, that, that's clear. And Dawn then, when an organization wants to introduce new measuring systems, what should they take into account in making sure they select the right equipment? Okay, so then they need equipment that has adequate discrimination. And as a rule of thumb, that's normally about one tenth of the uh, tolerance. So if, for example, we were measuring something uh, that was 0 0.1, then we would need something that's capable of measuring 0 0.01. Okay, so that's a useful rule of thumb then that auditors can maybe check. So if the tolerance is 0.1 millimeter, the smallest units on the scale of the equipment should be 0.01. Yeah. Yeah, and I have seen examples in audits where that rule certainly doesn't hold up and the organization wonder why all the measurements are looking the same. <laughs> yeah. It's that they cannot discriminate between the parts with the instrument they've selected. And I guess that would be in the new product introduction process, the organization has to select the suitable measuring equipment. Very much so. Okay. Devon, uh, about MSA then, do we have to do it on every instrument and do we have to involve every person involved in the measurement process? in measurement system analysis studies. Right, and no, we don't have to do it on every piece of equipment, nor every person. Uh, and we have actually outlined that in FAQ 3, or I'm sorry, FAQ 6. Right, okay. Um, yeah. Talking about uh, equipment and gauge families. Right, okay. So we're saying then, for example, if an organization has 10 0 to 25 millimeter micrometers, they're all being used to measure a similar material in a similar work environment with similar skill level people, that maybe we can do one measurement system analysis study for that type of equipment. Right. Yeah. And I guess for that to work, the organization has to clearly define what are the types of equipment that they have specified in their control plan. Okay. Dawn, is MSA applicable then uh, to variable and attribute equipment. And maybe you can give me a simple example of what, you know, is the difference between variable and attribute. Okay, so yes, uh, the simple answer is MSA is applicable to uh, attribute and variable measuring equipment. Yeah. Uh, variable measuring equipment gives you a, a, a number yeah. as, uh, as an output. Whereas attribute tends to be a yes, no, pass, fail. So right. that could be something like a go, no, go gauge. Whereas the, um, whereas the variable could be yeah. something like a, a micrometer or a vernier. Right. OK, so it is applicable to both that variable equipment and attribute equipment. Yeah. And Devon, when an organisation then is going to do MSA studies, how do they go about doing it and, and knowing which manual they should right. be using as a reference? 
So obviously you're gonna check the customer specific requirements first because they'll outline what reference document they want you to use. Uh, additionally, you can, if there's no none defined, you can look to Annex B within the IETF 16949 standard. Right, okay, so that is gonna really depend then on either the customer specific requirements or the organization requirements. Okay, and final question, Dawn, about acceptance criteria. When organizations do studies, how do they know whether they're good or no good, the <laughs> results? Um, again, it's very much dependent on the customer and the customer specific requirements. Uh, the reference manuals uh, do actually give acceptance criteria within that. Yeah. But obviously yeah. it, it's critical that personnel are competent enough to be able to uh, interrogate those results and, and decide whether or not the measurement system is acceptable or not acceptable yeah. for what they're actually measuring. Right, so the auditor then has to really understand then from the organisation what the reference manual is they're referring to and in that reference manual or in their individual customer specifics, there may be defined acceptance criteria. So we will be exploring um, MSA for variable and attribute equipment in the rest of this uh, video series. But just summarizing on the principles of MSA, uh, measurement system analysis is looking at the complete measurement process and the influence, for example, that the man can have on the measurement process, the machine, uh, the method, uh, the material that is being measured, or in fact, the work environment is looking at that complete measurement process. ITF defines that MSA has to be done for each type of measuring test equipment system specified on the control plan. That could be variable equipment or it could be attribute equipment. The organization has to understand any customer specific requirements for reference manuals and also acceptance criteria. And if not specified by the customer, then the organization have to specify which reference manuals they use.